five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Falcon 9 is pitching down range. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from the historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Terminal Space Center, telemetry. carrying our stack of Starlink satellites and two ride shares into orbit. We throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during vehicle supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during ascent, so slowing the vehicle down helps during that short period. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out that we reached max Q. In about a minute, we're gonna have three events happening back to back. First will be the main, will be main engine cutoff, or as you'll hear it called out, Miko. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name suggests, this is where the first stage separates from the second stage, with stage one starting to make its way back to Earth for landing on our started. While stage two continues its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel the second stage along with the Starlink and two rideshare satellites into orbit. So just a few seconds ago, we heard the call out that MVAC chill has begun. That's the same thing as what I described prior to liftoff for the M1D engines. We flow a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pump of the MVAC engine, uh, helping to prepare the prop system for that super cold fluid to flow through. So there we can see that the engine Stage separation confirmed. All right, so on the left-hand side of your screen, we got the first stage and the second, on the right-hand side, the second stage, and there we heard call out MVAC ignition. We can see that nozzle begin to develop a lovely orange glow as Earth rotates in the background. On the left-hand side, we got first stage deploying the grid fins in preparation for the drone ship landing. In just a few seconds, we're going to have fairing deploy. Love that view of MVAC. And there's our first view inside fairing the payload fairing. Uh, there we have visual and uh, call out there that fairing separation has occurred. As a reminder, we will be attempting to recover those fairing halves today with our recovery ship, Sheila Bordelon. And of course, we're gonna be recovering the first stage with our drone ship, utilize of you for today's recovery attempt. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to wake, make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. We do this at the last minute to conserve as much fuel as possible. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A. On the right side of your screen, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 Stage 2 as it delivers our Starlink and rideshare payloads to orbit. On the left, a Stage 1 is cruising back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, in the Atlantic Ocean. 
Our Starlink satellites are in LEO, or low Earth orbit, at around 550 Both kilometers. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Most satellites are around 36,000 kilometers in altitude at geo or at geostationary orbit. When the satellites are further from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and the satellite, it's also known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities like video calls and online gaming. About a minute out here from entry burn. On the left hand, see the first stage as it cruises in. Uh, Falcon 9 is equipped uh, with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. Uh, this use, it, the, grid, the stage uses nothing but the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. They orient the rocket during re entry and guide the rocket during descent. Occasionally, you'll also see some white puffs. These are nitrogen gas bursts for attitude adjustment and control. Now we're about 20 seconds out from entry burn. As a reminder, this is a three engine burn that is meant to slow the first stage as it hits the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn is started. And stage one, entry burn, shut down. And we just had a confirmation of stage one, entry burn, cut off. Now, we're about 60 seconds away from landing. And at this point, the vehicle is traveling around 900 miles per hour. This really puts the deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we will have slowed from twice the speed of a jet all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. There are a couple of the events scheduled to happen in close proximity here. Stage one landing burn will begin and will finish its burn in about 25 seconds. And then stage two, two up in space will stop firing about 50 second, 15 seconds later, at which point we'll enter the first coast period. So prepare for that in about 45 seconds. Stage one is transonic. Got a great view of both the first stage re-entering into the Atlantic and stage two as it continues on a nominal orbit. Stage one landing burn has started. Got a start of stage one. Turn as a reminder, ends. We may lose coverage of the vehicle as it attempts to land on the drone ship. Landing legs have deployed. Landing leg deployed. Stage two FTS is On the left-hand side of the screen, got a beautiful view of a successful landing. This marks our 84th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and the sixth recovery of this particular booster. Tico. And there we had second engine cutoff one, or Seco one. Waiting for a confirmation of good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. And there the team confirmed good orbit. Now, stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 45 minutes or so. While that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. We'll see you back here at T plus 54 minutes for a second stage relight and the deployment of our two ride shares on board today. Welcome back to the webcast for our 28th Starlink mission. Quick recap for those that have just joined us. We had an on-time liftoff at 6.56 p.m. Eastern Time from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, a nominal Stage 1 ascent, and a picture-perfect landing on our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Of course, I still love you. And Stage 2 is in a nominal coast. We're currently waiting for the relight of our second stage, known as SES-2, and that'll be coming up in a, just under 10 seconds. 
This is gonna be a quick burn of our MVAC engine, lasting roughly five seconds or so. We've got some nice ground track views there. Hopefully we'll be able to bring you back that second stage footage momentarily. And there we got it now. MVAC reignition. Seco 2. All right, so there, as you saw, confirmation of both the relight and the cutoff of that second engine just a few seconds, like I said, and we're waiting to hear that we're in a good no orbit. orbit insertion. All right, so there, we heard it. We're in a good orbit. Now, as a reminder, we have two ride shares on board today, one for Capella Space and the other for Tyback. In just under two minutes, we'll have our first rideshare deployment for Capella. Capella Space is launching a Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, satellite into low Earth orbit to join its growing constellation of 24-7 all-weather Earth observation satellites. Capella's automated systems collect very high-resolution, high-speed imagery of the planet's surface to help its customers make more informed economic, environmental, and policy decisions with reliable information. Following deployment on our Transporter 1 mission in January earlier this year, the Capella constellation covered breaking global events at night and through clouds, including the Ever Givens blockage of the Suez Canal and the recent volcanic eruption on St. Vincent. Once fully commissioned, each additional satellite provides Capella's government and commercial customers with more capacity and increasingly timely SAR data. Deployment of that synthetic aperture radar satellite will be coming up in about 23 seconds. There we have a great view of the Starlink satellites, which we will be deploying later on and of course, beautiful planet Earth rotating below. Aft spacecraft deploy confirmed. All right, so there we heard the call out that we had successful deployment of that synthetic aperture radar satellite for Capella Space. Next up, we'll deploy the rideshare satellite for Tyvac, and that'll take place a few seconds after the T plus one hour mark. For those that are just joining us, we just deployed the synthetic aperture radar a couple minutes ago for Capella Space. And next up, we'll have the deployment for our second rideshare, Tyvac. And later on, around the T plus one hour and 30 minute mark, we'll be deploying our batch of Starlink satellites. Beautiful view of those Starlink satellites there on your screen now. Acquisition of signal, Tasmania. For those who may not be aware, SpaceX offers opportunities for small satellites to ride to space on existing low Earth orbit missions. This is known as a ride share. By doing so, we're able to provide launch opportunities a couple times a month for these smaller satellites. I'd 
like I mentioned earlier, instead of the usual 60 Starlink satellites that we typically launch, we've reduced that number to 52 Starlink satellites in order to make room for today's two rideshare payloads. We've already deployed the first of those two payloads, and the second one, this time for tieback, will be coming up in about 30 seconds. All right, deployment of the Tyvek rideshare satellite coming up in just a couple seconds. Forward spacecraft deploy confirmed. All right, there we heard the call out that that second rideshare satellite has been deployed. So now stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 37 minutes or so before we deploy our Starlink satellites. While this happens, sit back and enjoy some more Space Jams. We'll see you back here at T plus one hour and 37 minutes. Hi, and welcome back to our webcast for our 28th Starlink mission and 15th mission so far this year. As a recap, we've had an on-time an on liftoff from our Kennedy Space, Space Center Pad 39A. Our first stage booster landed for its eighth time and 84th recovery overall. Stage two completed its two burns and we deployed our two ride shares. One correction on the deployment sequence. The first deployment was for our customer tieback, and the second deployment was for our synthetic aperture radar satellite for Capella Space. Now that we're coming up on deployment of our Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit or LEO, acquisition of signal, Kate. Let's listen in for the call out of payload deploy. Starlink deploy confirmed. <clears throat> and we've confirmed deploy of the Starlink satellites. Now you can see the satellites, uh, the Starlink satellites out in space drifting away from the second stage. As a reminder, this is just their drop off orbit. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array. And over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way into operational orbit. And with that, we'll bring our webcast to a close for today. Thank you to the range and FAA for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in Starlink service, head over to starlink.com and sign up. Thanks for joining us and have a good evening.